Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net. Who talks like that? All right. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some advanced day to night techniques, and we're going to try to achieve some effects like this. Here is the original footage. As you can see, it's daytime. Now, if you know you're going to be performing a day to night conversion, let's see, D, T, N, C, D, T, N, C, day to night conversion, D, N, C. So if you know you're going to be performing a D, N, C, then there's a couple of things you want to think about while you're filming. One, try to film in the shade or film without direct sunlight, perhaps at dusk or, you know, behind a mountain, you know, under a tree, something like that. And do not blow your footage out with the exposure. So make sure you set that to a manual exposure and bring it down a little bit more than you might normally. Now, even if you do everything right, it is possible that your footage may still turn out to be carp because sometimes it just doesn't look right, just doesn't look natural. But if you follow these techniques, you might be able to get something that looks pretty good. Now, you probably noticed that I said carp instead of crap, and the reason why was not to be polite, although it works out that way. But has anyone ever seen a carp? Okay, it's a huge fish. It's a bottom-feeding fish. I mean, look at this thing. And that's why you say, holy carp. Holy carp, Batman. Anyway, back to it. Here we have a truck, and what we're going to do is get the process underway. So with the footage selected, we're going to choose Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation, and Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And what we're going to do is bring the saturation down just a little bit. Now, when there is no light, there is no color. So we want to bring the color down just a little bit. Now, tinting your footage blue is more anecdotal, but it does help to sell the effect. So we're going to go ahead and do it. But first, we're going to crush the whites by bringing this top point of the curves adjustment down for the RGB, then adding a nice contrast curve like that. And then I'm going to go to the red channel, and we're going to bring the red channel down, which kind of adds a little green, and then we're going to go to the blue channel and bring it up, which adds a little blue. We can also bring this up too, and that kind of adds a little more blue to the sky. So first step, that's it. And we can come back and adjust this a little bit more a little bit later. But first, let's duplicate our footage. And what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this even darker. So instead of focusing on the overall image, we're going to use the second instance to focus on the top sky. Make sure your hue and saturation and curves are reset for the second copy. And again, we're going to crush the colors all the way down. Crush them good. And then we're going to take our hue and saturation and bring it beneath our curves adjustment. And we're going to turn on the colorize. And we're going to spin this around till it's blue. Maybe bring the saturation up just a bit. And play with the contrast a little bit here. And remember, we're only focusing on the horizon or the skyline. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the saturation just a little bit. Okay, now. Everything else looks pretty bad, but this top line looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is take the second layer, grab the rectangular mask tool, and we're going to draw a large mask across the top half of the footage. And just make sure you extend it out because we are going to feather it. And we don't want the edges to come in. And if you hit F, that will bring up the feathering options here. And this is a really good way to just add sort of a ND filter to your sky. And that way you can expose for both your primary source and your background. And again, we can go into the curves adjustment for the background and maybe add a little bit more blue by bringing the red down and the blue channel up even more. And then overall bringing the brightness down even further. Okay, so the next step is to go to the effects and presets, type in spotlight, and take the CC spotlight filter and apply it to a new gray solid. 
and I'm going to choose OK. And then we'll apply the filter. Now the great thing about the spotlight filter is it does create a nice fall off light and create some great characteristics for what a real light does. So we're going to adjust the parameters here and I'm going to set the height down to about 20. And then we're going to bring the cone angle in and the softness out. Let's see here. We'll increase that some more here. Okay, so these settings work pretty good. And we're going to change the render option to light only. And then we're going to change the transfer mode to classic color dodge. Classic color dodge right here. And then if we turn the layer into a 3D layer, F4, to bring up the 3D option, we can then rotate the layer downward and sort of lay it on the floor. At this point, we're going to want to increase the intensity of the light. And what I'm going to do is then push it into 3D space up to the car. And then I'm going to duplicate it and move it over so that basically we have our two headlights. And you can adjust this as needed. And this is obviously the light that is being cast onto the floor. And what I'm going to do is create a new null object and turn it into a 3D layer also. And then if I go to my top view I can then adjust my null object to be in line with my lights. So my lights are somewhere right about here. And I want my null object to be just about right there. I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis also. If we come back to the active camera, what I'm going to do is take these two spotlights and parent it to the null. And that way I can move the null object around and the lights will also follow. And I can easily rotate this so that the animation can be followed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and name these. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the position, scale, and rotation and you're going to animate the orientation on the 3D layer. And what you're going to do is animate this so that the light follows the 3D animation. And some of the stuff you're going to do is going to be very detailed and others is just going to be quick and fast. So depending on the level of detail you want, it's up to you, but I certainly don't want to sit here and rotoscope for a very long time. But I just want to give you the basic idea. And we're also going to rotate it also because the headlights are sort of turning as it goes around this area. And you'll notice that even with a few keyframes, it can look pretty good. Um, obviously you want to make sure your animation is uh, right on. Um, I can probably lose this middle keyframe for the orientation and that way it's constantly rotating. But as long as you match that up pretty good I think, uh, I think you'll do alright and it's great because you can just move this null object around and even scale it to be able to get the perspective that you need. Next thing we're going to do is create a new black solid. Choose OK. We're going to make the headlights. And I'm going to choose Effect, Generate, Lens Flare. And we'll use the 105 millimeter prime. And we'll set this right into the middle. And then we'll choose Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And we'll just crush the black a bit so that it's black on the edge and not a bright color. Then we'll choose Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation. And we'll colorize the Lens Flare, maybe a uh, slightly yellow maybe about there and if we hit F4 we'll change the transfer mode to add and what we want to do is scale this down and we do not want to see a sharp edge right here so just keep bringing this over until that disappears and we can also bring it in a bit so that we have a hotter spot in the middle um, that's what's great about adjusting it with the curves and then we're going to take this and we're going to position it onto the light. And we're going to scale it down. And then we're going to duplicate it and move one over to the side. And you can always scale one down so that one's brighter and the other is, you know, not pointing directly at the camera. It's kind of a nice way to add a little more realism. But basically, you're going to take the position and the scale and you're going to keyframe these two parameters and you're going to go through your animation. And yes, you're going to sit here and animate these to line up 
with the headlights. Now it's so bright and blown out that you do get away with a little bit, but I will tell you, it is a pain. So go ahead, have fun. You can track it, of course, if you're using a shot that's not as dynamic, you know, where the car's coming forward at me and turning and getting larger all at the same time. But if you just do a simple, you know, car driving by or something like that, you can obviously track this and make it a lot easier. But otherwise, just kind of go in there, uh, middle of frames, and uh, just uh, line it up. It won't be the end of the world. And then when it gets to a certain point where you can't see it, you know, you can mask it off or even uh, fade it out or something like that. Let's see here. So, but anyway, for the gist of it, I'm going to shut off the null object here temporarily. you can get the basic idea of what we're trying to create. Now, of course, we can create the light beams, the actual light, like if it was dusty and the light was traveling through the dust and kind of lights it up for volumetric lighting. But in reality, you don't actually see that very often because, you know, light doesn't always travel through dirt. I mean, we're on a dirt road here, but there's no logic to what I'm saying. No, you know what I'm saying, driving down the street or something and... There's not a lot of dust, no volumetric. So the idea is to create what is cast and then create the light sources. But that's, uh, that's that. So the key here is making sure that you have some specular highlighted areas so that it doesn't look so fake. And that brings me to my next step, and that is, say there's houses in the background or windows or something like that. What you can do is create a new solid, like an orange light orange solid and make a little mask or if you take the pen tool you can draw a very detailed mask and say for example there was a street light up here somewhere and we wanted to add a little glow that's how we could do it and obviously we want to track that into the shot also either by keyframes and if there's windows, you just kind of light the window up using this same technique, and that way it creates sort of a nice, you know, lit up looking effect. And if we go back to our Google image search, um, say we look for night house, you'll probably find some images of what a house looks like at night, and you can kind of get some ideas on how the illumination should probably look and use that as sort of a reference for what you're going after. So obviously at nighttime, um, incandescent lights or indoor lights look orange or yellow, so we want to try to create that effect. Also, feel free to use the spotlight to create sort of the fall off from a porch light. You see how this light is hot right here and slowly falls off in the direction of the light. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you're putting together a shot on your own for a city or for a housing track. Also, I have another example that I want to show you, and that is this shot. And I took this picture from uh, siliconimaging.com. They have a great 2K high-definition camera, sort of an open-source kind of camera. Um, I'm plugging them, obviously, because I've taken this image illegally, and I want to at least say, hey, hey, you know, at least I plugged your company. But anyway, and what I have here is a shot, and this is the original shot. And you can see it's not blown out, and it's sort of in the shade. So a perfect candidate for doing a day-to-night conversion. And with a few effects, I was able to create the luminance from the window and a little light on the side of his face. So if I add this to a new comp, what to do is similar to what we did earlier, and that is we're going to choose effect, color correction, hue and saturation, effect, color correction, curves, and we'll bring the saturation down a bit and the overall luminance down and a little contrast here and we'll go to the red channel and take away some red and we'll go to the blue channel and add some blue so basically get a sort of a darker look and we can even take that a further a further step so okay so then we'll duplicate this and that kinda creates our base darkness and then what we're gonna do is reset the curves and instead of using the colorize filter some of you guys noticed that a curves adjustment will do the same thing and in many cases that is true and basically by crushing the blacks you can create a matte for a specific color 
and that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a mat for the face, and that looks pretty good. And I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and put it beneath this mat. We'll call it mat. And we'll add a curves adjustment to this layer. And we'll set the track mat, F4, to luma mat. And with this adjustment layer, we can increase the gamma, so sort of brighten up that area. And we can change it to blue or blue and create sort of a moonlight color coming on him. And that's always nice. Um, but the good thing about this is you add in some specular color that would sort of be lost with the previous effect. But you take it a step further, make another copy. And what we can do is take the pen tool and now I know this is just a picture but I will show you the proper way to roto and that is we're going to create a shape around the entire window and then we're going to add a subtraction mask so another mask around his arm and then we hit M M and we set the second mask to subtract and the reason you do it this way is it just works a lot better and you can work on one thing at a time. So you can work on getting this mask to follow the window really well. And then once you're done, then you can take this and use it as the obscure mask to be able to take away parts where somebody crosses. So that's the proper way. Um, trust me, it's the best way to do it. Anyway, I'm going to feather the mask there, two pixels. And what we can do is brighten this window up. So I'm going to bring the curves adjustment up. And remember, Incandescent light is kind of orange looking, so we'll bring the red up and we'll go to the blue channel and bring the blue down. Kind of create sort of a nice bright looking window. And then we can choose effect, stylize, glow, and just increase the radius but bring the brightness down. And that sort of creates a light coming from inside their effect. And then at this point, we can then go back to the adjustment layer and change the color to more of a red color because now we have a light source that could be bouncing on his face. So as you can see the basic technique is pretty easy but as far as taking it to the next level with extra layers and rotoscoping it can be somewhat difficult. Similarly if you've ever bought a box of cereal on the back there's these magic eye games sort of like this computer scrambled image and if you stare at it in a certain way and then bring it away from your face you can sort of see this 3D shape of a skateboard or something lame like that. And uh, gosh dang it, I can never get those things right. I've tried so hard. I got a book you know, on how to do it. <sighs> but anyway, my name's Andrew Kramer, and thanks for watching this tutorial slash demonstration. I uh, hope you guys will come by the blog, leave a comment, and... Uh, Hey, don't forget to stop by the purchase page, pick up a great DVD as well. Okay guys, thanks a lot and we'll see you next time.